Hey, good afternoon, Resistance. It's Joy here. Uh, I talked about doing a video on our water catchment system, and that's what I'm going to do here today. Uh, hope y'all people are staying cool. It's hot and muggy out here today, and uh, I can hear thunder rumbling off in the distance, so we may get us a thunderstorm. And uh, kind of prompted me to get out here and do this video right quick. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the camera around and show you what I've got going on, what we do with it. Okay, this here is our water catchment barrel. Let's see if I can back this camera out a little bit. Yeah, okay. And what I've did, I've got it plumbed in to our gutter system on the house. Now, I mean, I can always take and reinstall the downpipe. You know, nothing to it. Just put it back up there. Set a little black piece on the vinyl side in there and just, you know, reattach it back. And there's one underneath the bushes here. You know, it's not that big of a deal not really hard to do but I really don't need it there at this time and I'll, I'll show you what we got now like I say this is my catchment barrel and you can see the black window screen material that's just a, a nylon screen that you can buy and I use that as a, a filter on the inside and what it you know like trash leaves debris and any, any that kind of stuff it catches it in the top of the inside lid of that tank. Uh, I've got the lid on it. I uh, wish I had my ladder over here. I could show you a little bit more. But it's trapped inside there, you know, by the lid. And it, it serves as a screen. I take it off every now and again, you know, clean it, you know, make sure it's not got no holes or nothing in it. And as this water tank fills up, I've got it plumbed in here with a, you know, a little, little faucet with a hose pipe run to it. And I've got, this here is what I call my overflow barrel. And I, I run into needing this sometimes if my other barrels are so full, I can't get no more water in them. And I'll use this, I'll just take the lid off, open up that overflow valve, disconnect the hose, and just let it empty into this one. And uh, you know, usually I can fill up all these tanks, I've had them filled before, and then I've just allowed the water to run down I mean, it just goes down into this uh, flower bed that we have over here. Uh, it's a big Queen Anne's lace, if anybody's wondering what kind of bush that is. And, you know, we just allow it to run down, and it, it runs down in and, and these other beds, and this hosta and all that stuff like that catches that water drain off. So, it, you know, it's not really hurting anything to do it like that. All right. Now, like I say, we, I've got a hose pipe hooked to it, and this is that old hose that you see advertised on TV you know it draws all up and everything and it works good for this uh, now if I was going to water my garden so if I wanted to use this tank to water this garden I won't use this hose and I've tried it it does not work good because I only get a small trickle because you have to have enough downward pressure and gravity working to your advantage to make that work and in a 55 gallon tank of water you don't really have a lot of water pressure but i do have enough to where this line can run i'm gonna we're gonna follow it on down and we're going downhill here and i'll show you where this goes down to and like i say it's a downhill path so it's actually gaining a little bit more pressure coming down not a whole lot but enough and these are my water storage barrels and like I say I've got the hose that runs up you know in through there and I've got it just hanging into this barrel and as that barrel up there fills up it will drain into this barrel and so on this barrel here this is the empty one I've got me a pallet set here because that's the way I want to do these these two over here is emptied I just emptied them out over this week watering the gardens and I want to get me some more pallet materials and get these up off the ground. Uh, these are my full barrels here and you know I started using some water on this. Now these barrels these are except for this metal one. This metal one contained a uh, material according to the side of the barrel it was silicone joint sealer something that my grandson uses where he worked he works in concrete 
Uh, this stuff come in plastic bags inside these barrels. These barrels are coated on the inside. And as long as they're not scratched or anything like that, anything, you know, you could boil this water and I don't know if I would drink it, but you know, you could use it for other things. And the same with these other barrels. These barrels are food grade barrels. These barrels come from a, a food processing company. We have a, uh, I believe it's Dole actually. And uh, they dispose of these barrels. We can get them dirt cheap. I mean, I paid 20 bucks a piece for these barrels. Uh, they come with locking rings. Uh, they have sealed, Let's see if I can, that one's not on it. There's an O-ring that goes up inside there. I've done something with them. Uh, those may have been damaged. Let's look on this one. Yeah, this one still has the O-ring on it. So, you know, you can seal these up, put the locking rings on them. That's gonna stop your mosquito larvae and all that stuff like that. Now, when you got the lids locked on these, you know, it still does the same thing. You know, the mosquitoes can't get in there. They can't lay the larvae. And I'm gonna tell you, we, we mosquitoes are terrible here. Now, we do this because our, we're on a city water supply here. I'm gonna walk up here to this garden and just kind of go across the tomatoes and stuff while I'm talking to you. Uh, our city water supply here, you know, there's a lot of chlorine and such in there. And the first couple of years we, did our gardening, you know, we was using that to water our gardens. And I'm gonna tell you what, man, our plants really struggled and suffered. Uh, we had plants dying on us, burning up, you know, just doing terrible. So we started using rainwater, started catching our rainwater, and that's what we do. And we do this the same way you would do it in SHTF. I don't try to pump water from one location to another. I don't try to uh, use any kind of fancy transfer gadgets or nothing or anything. It's just physical labor. And, you know, cause that's how it's gonna be done in SHTF. So if I'm gonna do it, I might as well do it the way I'm gonna do it then. Uh, I'm gonna step back down here for just a minute and show you something that has multiple purposes. Now, you see those yellow buckets there? Those are cat litter buckets. Uh, I use them when I'm taking water from the buck, the barrels to the other gardens. We have multiple gardens here at this place. I mean, we have them over there. We have them over here. We have them way up through yonder, you know, and you know, I'll fill them buckets up and I'll tote them up through there. Uh, they go about 40 pounds a piece when they're full. So, you know, I get a little bit of workout, you know, cause I'm carrying them things, you know, a couple hundred yards uphill and I get about, you know, four to six buckets at a time. You know, not, not that many at one time, but that's how many I wind up carrying up yonder. And, you know, it keeps me moving, keeps me steady. It gets me a little, gets my heart rate up a little bit. And, uh, you know, when I'm up there, I use the watering cans. We fill them up, we water the plants by hand. And that's that's just how we do it, people. Uh, and our gardens have really, really benefited from this rainwater that, that we're using like this. Uh, these plants no longer get uh, city water. Uh, these are beans. We've got some different stages of corn planted in here. Uh, this is a what we call a middle stage because we have some younger corn here and we have older corn here and actually this corn is tasseled uh, you know we've got the tassels on top we've got corn coming on it uh, several of these plants have uh, two ears uh, coming on them uh, I mean that, that's that's what we want uh, so the rainwater helps people. Uh, now, people say, well, you know, there's restrictions, water restrictions, you can't get this, you can't do that. I call bullshit, people. Uh, you know, this is my property. I'm gonna do what I wanna do on it. What I'm doing is not hurting nobody, it's not doing anything, it's to my benefit. They just not getting my tax dollars off of it. So, there's that. Now, there's another thing you can do with that 
particular type water catchment system. Uh, you can build another section and like if I was to do it, this, that's, that's a bathroom here. And I could actually put a barrel, tap it into that, and I could run me a small hose through that window. Uh, yeah, I know it's unsightly. Uh, and I could plumb my uh, toilet into that. And I can have a working to toilet as long as I have water in that barrel. Uh, you know, and push come to shove, you know, you can, uh, you can build you a shower to do the same thing. Just change that faucet to a uh, shower head and you know it's a cold shower but hey it's it's a, it's a cold it's a shower you know to get you clean uh, that would actually be a good thing to do instead of trying to use your shower in the house because that's less water that's going to be dumped into a septic tank system which we do have here uh, we're not on city sewer we have a septic tank out here and you know, it was, you know, everybody's gonna have to have their septic tank pumped at some time or another. But an SHTF and your septic tank fills up, that's not it's it's done. I mean, unless you dig it up and you get in there and you scoop that stuff out yourself and you dispose of it some way. However, who knows? I, I don't know. I don't know how you would dispose of it unless you're gonna. I mean, yeah, I guess we could haul it way off down the woods, but man, that's gonna be a job and a half. Anyway. Uh, that's all I was wanting to point out today, people, was the uh, water catchment system. And like I say, those barrels, uh, I got those about 20 bucks a piece. And they're 55 gallon barrels. And I've got probably 60 bucks tied up into the platform that I built specifically for this. Uh, it's on four by four posts, uh, two by four platforms, one by six floor uh, uh, decking wood up there. Uh, so if you do something like this, make sure you build something sturdy enough that's gonna hold probably, uh, let's see, 55 times, I, I would say about four or 500 pounds, uh, you know, just right off the top of my head. Uh, that's about what a 55 gallon barrel of water is going to weigh you, you know, and uh, that is more than sufficient to hold that weight. Uh, I wouldn't be scared to, if I had the room to put two of them up there. Uh, but anyway, that's what I wanted to do today, y'all, and uh, show that to you. And like I say, the uh, gardens have really helped, you know, benefited from it. I don't know if you can see these tomatoes that's coming on in here. Uh, but I'm gonna have a decent run of tomatoes this year and corn it looks like, and beans and peppers. Uh, garden's doing real good this year. Uh, my okra's struggling. Looks like we're gonna be replanting that. But anyway, y'all, that, that's all I got for today right now. So y'all have a good one. Try to stay cool, stay low, stay ready.